Today we're talking about how to return multiple things from a function in C or C++. Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I want to address a question that often comes up when people are new to C and C++, and especially when they're coming from high-level languages like Python or Ruby. The question is, how do I return multiple things from a function in C or C++? And the answer to that question is today's video. Now in this video, I'm going to give you a few different options. If I don't get your favorite, please make sure to mention it down in the comments. And of course, the source code from this video is available through Patreon as always. Thank you to all of you who support this channel. Now let's consider a scenario. So say I've got a function like this. Now, of course, this code doesn't work, but I want to make it work. So what I'd like to do here is I'd like to have a function that returns two doubles. It takes an array of doubles and a length of that array. And what it's going to do is it's going to go through a single for loop. Here, let's indent things a little bit. It's going to go through a single for loop. And at each step, it's going to check to see if the number it's looking at is smaller than the minimum or larger than the maximum. And it'll update that. And the cool thing about this would be that in one pass, I can get both the maximum and the minimum value. And so then at the end, I want to be able to return both of these values. Also note the assert statement up at the beginning. That's just for sanity checking, just to make sure that we don't get any zero or negative length arrays. And if you're wondering about this assert statement or the fact that I'm passing in a pointer here and talking about it as an array, then I have a couple other videos on those topics, links in the description in case you want to check them out. But this algorithm has a minor problem when I'm in C and C++ because it has two results. It's trying to produce two things at once and C and C++ do not allow me to do this. They don't allow me to say, I want to return a double and a double and then have a return statement that returns two things. So I need to find a solution to how do I get both of these things out. Now, one alternative could be that I could make two different functions, one to get the max and one to get the min, but that may not be quite as satisfying because then I would have to go through my array twice, which is twice as much work, and I can get the same result with just one for loop. And let's just say in this case that I really want to return two values from this function. That's just the abstraction that I want. Now, I don't often get too bothered by the limitations of C and C++, but sometimes it is annoying that I can't just say, I want to return min and max, just like I would do if I was writing this code in Ruby. So if you find yourself in this situation, I want to go through a few different options because what we have here is just simply not going to work. Okay. The first option we have is we can return values through arguments using pointers. So instead of giving the values back through a return statement, what I can do is I can pass in a pointer to a min and a pointer to a max. So here I'm just passing in two different pointers into my function. And then down here, once we compute the values, I could, instead of having a return statement, I can say p min equals min and p max equals max. So in this case, when you call this function, what you're going to do is you're going to pass in an address pointer, an address in memory someplace and say, this is where I want you to put this result. And then I can put that result in there. This is a really common approach you're going to see in a lot of different standard functions like pthread join. Check out my pthreads videos to see an example about that. But pthread join basically allows you to get a threads result after it completes if you want it. One thing that you will see in pthread join, and I'll add this here, is that this approach allows you also to make these arguments optional. For example, let's say I don't care about the min, I could pass in a null pointer. So often you're going to see things like this. You're going to see if p min is not null. So if someone passed in a null pointer, we would just ignore this result. And if they didn't, then we're going to actually pass the value back. Okay, so we'll do that with max as well. And this will work just fine. Let's go down and just try it out really quick. Just make sure this is all working. So in this case, I can pass in pointers to doubles just like this, and then remove these syntactically incorrect double return syntax that I was messing around with. And now if we come down here, we can compile. Notice I do have a make file here that I set up. There's really nothing fancy about it. This could be a make file for just about any of my other videos. Very simple. But I do have other videos on make if you're unfamiliar with make files and anything in here is confusing. But then if we come back here, we can run our example one program. And we can see, sure enough, it gets both those values, the max and the min, and returns them. And so this is working just fine. 
And as I mentioned before, we could make one of these optional. Let's uh, make sure that we initialize these to something. But like, let's say that I decided I really don't care about the minimum. I could just pass in null here. And now you're going to notice we don't bother getting the minimum value. We just get the maximum value. So that works too. I'm going to go back and undo that really quick. Well, we'll leave the initialization in there. But so that's option number one. You can tell it works. It's a fine option. And if you look at a lot of code, you're going to you're going to see this being done. But I do think we lose something here because it isn't clear when we take this approach. It isn't really clear what the direction of information flow is. When we return something and assign that value to a variable, that's really clear. We know that the function is producing a value and we're assigning that value somewhere else. So it's really clear that the information is flowing out of the function and into some result variable. But in this case, when we pass values in and out through pointers, the direction of the information flow is not so clear. Information could be going in, information could be going out. And so when you see something like this, you really need to pay close attention to the documentation just to make sure you understand what's going on because there are a lot of reasons that people pass in pointers to functions and this is only one of them. So now let's move on to option number two, which also isn't perfect, but I think it's a little bit more intuitive. And option two that we're gonna look at is to return a struct. So I'm just going to copy this, I'm gonna duplicate, and we're gonna make a second version of our function. I'm gonna call it get max and min two. And I'm going to say, we're not gonna pass things in, we're not gonna pass a bunch of pointers in, we're not gonna use that as our way of returning our values. Instead, we're going to return a struct. So let me first define my struct. Let's just make a quick struct that's got uh, not an int, double max and min, and we're gonna call it number range. Okay, so this is gonna be my result. It represents a pair of numbers, which is maximum and minimum. And then what I'm gonna do is just return a number range. Okay, now in here, instead of defining these as separate doubles, I can just say number range result. We'll call it result because that's what it is. And we'll just say result min equals the first value. And result max equals the first value and then we can return these. Okay, so we're basically just doing the same thing we did before, but we're now packaging the information into a struct. And then of course, down here, we need to add result in each of these cases. Okay, and then down here, we're simply, rather than all of this, we're just going to return result, okay? So this is just going to return this whole struct. So it's basically returning a bundle of data. And so let's come down here and add this to my main function. So let's call number two. And instead of double min max, we're just going to have number range and R. Let's assign it to the result here. We can remove those. And then here we're just gonna do NR min and NR max. And now we can come down here and we can compile it once again and we run it and now you notice that this works too. Now these are the two main ways that C gives you. There are a few other variants. For example, we could pass in an array of doubles and that's a lot like the first example. That's a lot like passing in the pointers, but I think it's a bit uglier, at least for this particular example. So I'm not gonna do it today. But while we're here talking about it, I do wanna mention a couple other options that you can use in case you're using C++. So you probably noticed that I have an example two over here in C++. I just wanna take you through it really quick because there are a few different alternatives that we can try if we're in C++. One of them is that we can use classes instead of structs. Okay, C++ has classes, C does not. And for this purpose, C++ classes are going to work almost the exact same as structs. I didn't really have to change anything except add a public in here, and that, that allows me to access the min and max elements of this class. Of course, I could add other things to this bundle of information, but for right now, my point is I just want to return two values, so this will work. And you notice that down here, the actual result, my actual function doesn't have to change one bit. 
So the other thing that you may have noticed as I went past it here is that this example I changed, instead of passing in pointers, I passed in references. So this is something that C++ allows you to do, and it's really just like the pointers technique that we used back in C, except that we don't need pointer notation. So in this case, under the hood, it's doing the same thing. It's passing in pointers, but the compiler basically handles the pointer notation for you. Another difference though, is that with references, we can no longer use that null pointer trick that we used before to make these values optional. And depending on what you're trying to accomplish, that may or may not be what you want. Pointers do have their uses. But the point is, is that we can compile this example just like the other one, and if we run it, then you notice we get the same result. So both of these approaches using references instead of pointers and returning a class instead of a struct, both of these are going to produce the same results. So all of this is gonna work. Of course, you can also use these techniques to return more than two. You can return three or four or five results, but I'll leave that up to you as a valuable educational exercise. I do hope this is useful. I hope it helps you in a future project. If it was useful, drop this video a like. Subscribe if you don't wanna miss the next video and I'll see you in the next one. Happy coding.